Hello everyone, this is Kelly Mara here. Today I'm drawing in the art style of the lovely and amazing Lavender Town, who I have been a long time fan of. Highly recommend checking her out and subscribing. And also talking about a topic that is a long time coming. I have many thoughts and opinions on Yandere Simulator. Thoughts and opinions that would not be sufficiently covered in a single video. I never had a means to share them until now, after I finally decided to take the plunge and shift my channel into the commentary genre, and with all the new videos being released, I actually have a valid reason to bring the game up again. Yandere Simulator has been a bane in my existence for quite a long time now, but I actually started off as a fan. Granted, I was in high school and my younger sister was the one who really got me into it. Yandere Simulator is quite a controversial game, starting from its concept, gameplay, story, and especially its developer, shall we say. If you've been in the gaming community for the past 6 or 7 years, you might remember a game called Yandere Simulator that everyone was playing because PewDiePie happened to pick it up that one time. It was still in early development at the time and, well, nothing much has changed in that regard. Funnily enough, it was never really the video game itself I was interested in, but rather the content surrounding it. I enjoyed watching Cub Scout's videos on Yansim and I liked the progress report videos Yandere Dev made because there was nothing like it on YouTube at the time. I still think there's nothing quite like it now. It all seemed well-intentioned and transparent and I was in love with the art direction and aesthetic of the game. But as time went on and my brain developed, I started noticing some pretty questionable statements and reasoning in those progress report videos. First, it was the videos about receiving too many emails and how him checking emails took up the time he needed to code, which slows down development. I clearly remember a segment where he says he doesn't want your help if your art wasn't good enough, which I thought was pretty rude, but it made sense. And then we got to the how long does it take to make a video game video, which was pretty disappointing knowing the game wasn't going to be finished anytime soon, but I respected him for going at his own pace and setting boundaries. After that, there was his video about Yansim actually being a V-slice, which even back then made me think that he was making excuses for adding so many features to the game despite him claiming that it was just a demo and that most of the assets are placeholders. And finally, the straw that broke the camel's back, the video that made me stop supporting Yandere Dev altogether, the hate and shame video, which I can't believe is still up on his channel. Looking back at it now, I can clearly see that Yandev, aka Alex Mahan, was just desperately trying to come up with excuses to buy himself more time. Not necessarily to finish the game, but to extend his shelf life of YouTube fame. But that's just my opinion. I won't speak too much about the game's to put it very lightly, rocky development process or the many controversies of both the game itself and its developer, because it has been extensively covered by channels such as FPS Diesel, Kappa Kaiju, and even The Right Opinion who have created feature-length videos on this subject matter. Links to their videos are in the description, and I highly recommend watching those too. After my video, of course. I'm more important. I pretty much cycle between those videos all the time because aside from being extremely well produced and entertaining, it also just never ceases to amaze me how a person like Yandere Dev exists. There's something pathetic yet infuriating about this guy that is also somehow addicting. You just, you gotta keep watching to see what he does next. Yandev has this uncanny ability to dig deeper than rock bottom. Just when you think he can't get any worse, he hits you out of left field with things you never even considered. I'll be honest, I never would have seen the my waifu sex doll thing coming. Which is ironic because not a single concept in his video game is actually original or exciting to begin with. Aside from all his methods of making excuses and avoiding accountability, I suppose. And before you come at me, it is very well documented that all the concepts in his game are borrowed from other games. 
Yandev has openly stated that he takes inspiration from Hitman, Persona 5, and pretty much compares his game to other much better produced games all the time. I just have this morbid fascination towards Yandere Dev. It's the same sort of fascination you get from watching a nature documentary featuring like a toad pushing eggs out of the holes in its back. You know what I'm talking about. But then, I'm also the kind of person who buys all the Dork Diary books because I enjoyed hating on the main character. I guess you could say that I'm what Yandev likes to call a gremlin, and I'm totally cool with that. I highly doubt he'll ever see my video anyway, and my therapist says bottling up your emotions is unhealthy. This gremlin has something to say, and if he doesn't want to listen to me, I don't care. This is about me and my selfish needs. Besides, I don't think I'd want to hear what a hypocrite who calls DID cringy roleplaying and bans them just for having it when he himself does the cringiest roleplay on his streams. Honestly, I don't understand how his fans are still supporting him after he discriminated against someone for their mental illness and nearly drove them to taking their own life. And then he still has the gall to talk about how they made him uncomfortable? Because obviously things like that are only valid when it's happening to you, isn't it, Yandev? When it's someone else, it's just out of your hands. But enough of that. Today, I will be going through some of the new announcement videos that Yandev has released and talking about the game's crowdfunding campaign. Now, normally, Yandev dedicates a lot of his time into streaming on his Twitch channel, which I like to check up on every now and again just to see if he's still doing it. I remember someone mentioning that a few days before Osana's release, Yandev wasn't streaming at all, which makes me question if he does do any work when he is streaming all the time. So seeing that he hasn't streamed for about 14 days, I knew he was planning something. After wondering if he kicked the bucket or decided to take some time off to spend time with his family for the holidays, which would actually be really wholesome and make him seem more human. <laughs> I guess, but lo and behold, my suspicions were correct. I'm actually rather impressed by the sheer volume of videos he's posting every single day, though I assume he must have been accumulating a backlog of videos since he delegates quite a lot of art and animation work to his volunteers. Honestly, that's one excuse I'm getting tired of hearing, saying that he's just one man. That might have been the case like 5 years ago, but this is completely untrue now because he himself has stated that he has volunteers doing quite a lot of work for him. This is totally fine of course. A lot of indie game developers have teams and you obviously can't do everything yourself unless you're Toby Fox or Scott Cawthorn, but those guys are more of an exception than the rule. Now, my big issue with Yandev is that recently, he seems to use those volunteers as a bit of a scapegoat for the game's slow progression, rather than it having to do with anything he does. He said it in a few videos now that the volunteers work on their parts only on their free time on the weekends, and because of that, the game is being completed slower, while also casually stating that he can complete all his tasks in just a few weeks. Definitely sounds like he's hyping himself up at the expense of his volunteers. I don't claim to know how fast he works or how Yan Sim's development is going behind the scenes, but from what I've seen, Yandev is pretty much omnipresent in all of Yan Sim's platforms. He's very active on his Discord, he's aggressively active on his WordPress, and monitors the subreddit extremely closely, and even has time to stream 3 hours a day every single day. Either the man never sleeps or he's not actually doing the work he says he's doing and is simply coming up with cool terms to make his daily activities seem important. Take this graph he featured in one of his newer announcement videos where he divides up his daily tasks. A lot of his time is dedicated to communicating with his volunteers and in my head, I kid you not, I thought, so you're basically chatting on Discord all day. I do a bit of commission work myself and I can't imagine my commissioners constantly messaging me every single day about how work is coming. However, that's only if I don't know that person and we have a strictly business relationship. When it's my friend who I normally talk to every day commissions me, I would talk to them every day still, but not always about work. But 
if my mom asks me why I'm on the computer all day every day, I just tell her that I'm working. But I might just be projecting here. So let's go down the list in chronological order. Obviously I'm not going to cover every single point made in the videos, but only certain points that stood out to me personally. I will be summarizing them to provide overall context though. Oh, and just for fun, if you are of legal drinking age, I challenge you to take a shot every time Yanderadev references another video game to steal ideas from. You won't die, but you definitely won't be walking straight after. This guy is like a magpie. If he sees something shiny that he likes, he just plucks it up and hoards it into his chaotic nest that is Yandere Simulator. We're starting things off with his how your feedback improved the Yandere Simulator demo video. Alex opens the video by talking about how he's been close attention to the negative feedback to the demo and making a lot of changes he felt improved the overall experience. But in my head, all I can think about is how he was at war with the speedrunning community because they were beating the game in under 5 minutes and Alex was trying desperately to patch out their exploits. There's like a super fast text scroll of the changes he's made on the demo and actually reading through them, you just think, well, why weren't these implemented from the very beginning? One such example is being able to skip intros and animations and changing Raibaru's routine if Osana is a mind-broken slave. That should pretty much be a given, right? If anything, this list just proves the fact that the demo was extremely rushed in its release and probably wasn't ready for launch at all. A big change he noted was when he realized that a video game is aimed at a general audience and not his own little niche where people have been following his game from day one. In particular are the scripted events that regular players would have no way of knowing about and are crucial for certain elimination methods. So Yandev is trying to think of ways that would point the players to these scripted events and his solution for it? Why, taking ideas from other games of course. I'll be honest, when Yandev brought up Majora's Mask, um, I felt genuinely violated. Don't get me wrong, implementing a notebook slash timetable mechanic to keep track of scripted events is a good idea, but only because Yandev took the idea from the greatest video game of all time. I'm just personally salty because this man played such good games and yet has such trashy taste. Man genuinely seemed more enthusiastic playing Galgun than Breath of the Wild or Ghost of Tsushima, and I think that says a lot. After that, he talks about how people complain about a lack of direction in the game and once again, he compares his game to a triple A game, Hitman specifically, where, well, it's self-explanatory, you're a hitman, you have to kill a target without being detected, uh, Yandere Simulator, you're just a high school girl who has a crush on a guy. If you don't know the intricate ins and outs, this game is basically just an anime high school simulator. A big fault of the game is that it's a very peculiar idea, something no one has ever actually done before, and trying too hard to be a different game only shoots itself in the foot. It shouldn't be a fusion of a bunch of different games, it should be its own thing, you know? And he does know how to do this because he did come up with an idea I genuinely liked for a tutorial level. It's fresh and original and I think it would be a good introduction to show players the ropes without hounding them too much. It's like the great plateau quests in Breath of the Wild. I think if he included more original ideas like that, where it's much more tailored to the setting of the game, it would add a lot more charm. Second video. Alex talks about his plans for the game, and I'm not going to nitpick too much because I genuinely couldn't care less what he decides to do with the game. I just find it funny that in the previous video, he was talking about how Yansim is a sandbox video game, and a huge drawback of sandbox and open world games in general is that players will miss a lot of things you might have put a lot of effort into, but they should be free to do that because it's a free roaming game. Not in Yandere Simulator, no no. Alex needs you to experience all of the useless random shit he added into the game for no reason aside from it's fun and he thinks it would be cool. Like, hey, if you were struggling so hard with frame rate, glitches, bugs, and crashes, then maybe it would be a good idea to streamline the game and put details into areas that matter? 
like rival elimination and NPC AI instead of freaking Yonvania minigame? Huh? Why does this exist? And speaking of things that didn't need to exist, we get to Raibaru, who is arguably just as pointless as Yandev's plotline for magical girl Pretty Miyuki. Remember when we were talking about Alex being at war with speedrunners before? Well, here it is again! Because it's so easy to get rid of Raibaru by telling her to go see Budo and in a not weird or creepy way, may I just compliment the artist who illustrated him because look at this guy. Look at him and tell me you wouldn't pounce on him as soon as he turned 18. Or 20. Because Yandev claims that all the students in the school are 18 and we all know that that's a load of bullcrap. And I'm not gonna catch myself a case, thank you very much. Anyway, next video. Yandev talks about the origins of the stealth mission in the game, which sounds pretty unextraordinary, right? Wrong. This video gave me that sweet sense of mean-spirited amusement more than any of the other two videos, and you want to know why? Because Yandere Dev's true 13-year-old self really shines in this one. This time, Alex references the Yakuza series as part of the inspiration for having a side mission outside of the game's usual environment, which was initially about kidnapping a loan shark's daughter to get him to leave the test rival's family alone. He says, and I quote, How would Yandere-chan deal with a loan shark if she were the protagonist of a Yakuza game? Well, she would go straight to his office, knock out all of his henchmen, and beat him within an inch of his life until he agreed to stop extorting Kokona's father. And I just... <laughs> I just can't with this man! This is straight out of r slash I'm 13 and this is deep, just like a previous video where he talks about how Yandere Chan would deal with being arrested and escapes by kicking the shit out of trained police officers. Oh yeah, sure, Alex. His ideas and writing are edgy, like the corner of a table or counter that you bump your pelvis into accidentally sometimes. But luckily, his audience was smart enough to know that this was a stupid idea and a particularly sharp fan of his suggested a stealth mission instead. Thank god for that guy. I appreciate you. Then we get to the part where he talks about the stalker's house and we get a little bit of foreshadowing about the crowdfunding campaign, but no no no, that's not the highlight of this video. The highlight, in fact, comes from Yandere Dev giving a logical reasoning as to why when the demo first launched, the stalker doesn't fight back when you confront him. His first explanation was that he doesn't want to get the cops involved because that'll get him in trouble, but the second explanation, well, he says, and I quote, He doesn't want to make too much noise and draw his parents into his room since he would be horribly embarrassed if his family saw his pitiful living conditions or his shrine to an anime girl. I think there's been a bit of a, uh, a bit of a Freudian slip there, if you know what I'm saying. But pushing on, he continues, And last, he is meant to be seen as a spineless coward who would be afraid to actually attack anyone. An impotent little man who is incapable of doing anything more severe than making anonymous threats over the phone. A person who wouldn't raise a finger against anything more threatening than a kitten. Mmm, yes, yes, very true, Alex. Mm. I just have this gut feeling that this guy is probably supposed to represent his gremlins out there. But whether intentional or not, I genuinely relish the irony that he has just perfectly described himself. The next video isn't really all that notable, aside from the fact that gameplay might become redundant since you're just accomplishing the same goal like 10 times. And considering how bad the game runs, I don't know if people have the patience to make it all the way to the end unless they're a YouTuber hoping to make content. There's a bit more of the crowdfunding campaign being sprinkled in there, and I still think that eliminating your crush's sister is psychotic to a whole new level. And he also compares Yansim to Lucius. And finally, we get to the final boss. The crowdfunding campaign announcement. You're all probably aware that Yandere Dev has a Patreon where people are paying this actual grown man to someday play his wet dream. 
They pay him enough to buy two Nintendo Switches, two sex dolls, and a Reddit page for $3,000, and presumably afford rent and bills and groceries every week without ever needing to find a real job. If you thought the money you were donating goes straight into the game, nah uh uh stinky. That money goes straight into Alex's pocket, which he openly states in this video. The only time when it does contribute to the game's development is when there is an excess in donations, so when the amount being donated goes over $3,500, which Alex claims as his monthly salary. I remember a time when he was asking people to donate to the Patreon so he can quote unquote make Yansim his full time job, claiming that that way he will be able to focus all his attention on Yandere Simulator and finish it faster, which we all know how that turned out. And this whole video is just baffling to me. He's doing the crowdfunding campaign so he can hire a professional team, but he already had a professional team trying to help him develop his game before and it fell through. Why would it be any different now? The entire reason why the tiny build collaboration didn't work out was because the person sent to work with Yandev needed to rewrite the game's entire code and that would stop Yandev from being able to make progress and upload videos onto YouTube which would kill the hype. It's just going to be the same exact thing all over again because the code he is using is fundamentally flawed. This new team would need to rebuild the game from the ground up for it to come close to a decent release reception. Yandere Dev is making it seem like the crowdfunding not working out will basically be the end of the world for Yandere Simulator because he will be forced to simply release the game with no new voice acting, no new animations, no new art assets, and all the rivals will just be clones of Osana with different hair. This literally sounds like a threat, like him saying to his young fans, hey, if you don't donate, this is what I'm gonna do to your game, this is I'm gonna do it. Essentially, he's just painting the crowdfunding campaign failing as the worst case scenario. Raising some money is sort of an in-between with better assets overall, but a delayed release date, which knowing how Yandev is with deadlines, this should pretty much apply for all options, including the successful crowdfunding campaign scenario, which he obviously paints as the best case one. However, there is another option that he can pursue that I'm certain he's aware of, but doesn't really want his young fanbase to know about. That option being, he could use his Patreon money to develop the game while he finds a real job to maintain his monthly earnings. You know, like a normal person. The reason I suggest this is because despite him already making Yansim a full-time job, it's still nowhere near being close to completion and is arguably going at the exact same pace as when Yansim wasn't his full-time job. It's not unreasonable for him to get a second job to earn some more money on the side. Take me for example. Even though I love making videos and I love drawing, I still have to work two jobs to earn a living while also studying for my full-time nursing degree. It's possible, but that would mean he would have to stop streaming. Oh, that's right, he has a Twitch account! You know, a platform where you have to pay money to subscribe to him! He's so adamant on his videos that his Patreon money shouldn't be touched because that's his salary and makes it seem like he isn't earning much at all when in reality, I'm almost completely certain that he's making way more than he lets on. Like. I understand wanting to preserve your savings, but Yandev is already notorious for his horrible money management skills, and there's really no one that can hold him accountable if he does decide to spend his funds irresponsibly. Like on a new video game to stream on his Twitch, or a new console, or I don't know, cosplay outfits for his sex dolls. All I'm saying is, I wouldn't trust this man with my money, and neither should you. He's proven time and time again that he is unreliable and has very little impulse control. If you genuinely care about this middle-aged man-child for whatever reason, then the worst thing you can do is reward him for his destructive, indulgent habits. Because if this keeps up, I can guarantee for certain that even if the crowdfunding campaign succeeds, none of you are going to get the game anyway because there will just be more controversies, more drama, and that's... It's all coming out of your pocket. But do take what I say with a grain of salt because 
I'm just a gremlin. What do I know? And that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much if you made it all the way to the end. Once again, please do not go and harass Yandere Dev. He's under enough heat already, and if we pressure him, it's just gonna make us look bad, so just chill. Be chill. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And please do check out my comic. That would make me really happy. I still can't believe I managed to break 100 subscribers. In fact, I'm almost at 200 now. Uh, I didn't think it would be this fast or this easy. I th <laughs> Just thank you guys so much. And I hope I can keep living up to your expectations in the future. But for now, goodbye.